The real causes of clogged arteries. By age 40, about half of us already have cholesterol deposits in our arteries. When the arteries become stiff and rigid, you do start to see issues like high blood pressure, poor circulation and more clotting, which is related to problems like strokes or heart attacks. But it's not necessarily the cholesterol that's causing the problem to begin with. Today I'll be showing you the 12 real underlying reasons that people get clogged arteries in the first place, followed by simple changes that support healthier, more flexible arteries over time. The first cause is a nitric oxide deficiency. Every day your heart beats around 100,000 times pushing blood through your arteries. This creates a lot of force which alone could damage your arteries over time. So to protect those delicate inner walls, the cells inside make a gas called nitric oxide which widens and relaxes the passageways so that your blood can flow freely. Now herein lies the problem. As we get older, our bodies make less nitric oxide, so the sheer force moving through them creates pockets of damage and inflammation. At this stage, small cholesterol particles and white blood cells start sticking to the damaged areas, which eventually can harden into a stiff plaque that slows blood flow. You need to understand that cholesterol is only acting like a band-aid or a patch repair kit. It's actually the low nitric oxide that's causing the root problem. Fortunately, it's very easy to help your body make more nitric oxide naturally and I'll show you how to do this later in the video. But the question is, why do nitric oxide levels drop in the first place? Well, the main reason is having too much sugar in the bloodstream. Whenever you consume foods or drinks that are high in refined sugar or carbs, they quickly convert into blood sugar which can stick to the proteins in your artery walls. This essentially damages those cells so they can't make as much nitric oxide to keep them relaxed. This is why blood pressure tends to go up when a person consumes junk foods. However, the worst sugar of all is called fructose. Fructose is 10 to times more reactive, meaning that it's more likely to form sticky proteins in your blood. Not only does this increase the risk of damaged or clogged arteries, but it can weaken collagen throughout your body, such as in your skin, spinal discs or knee joints. Unfortunately, high fructose corn syrup is cheap, so the manufacturers tend to add it to the soda drinks, table sauces, cereals, fast food, candy and baked goods. This doesn't mean that the fructose in whole fruit is the problem though, because fruit comes naturally packaged with fibre and antioxidants that help your body to absorb it slowly. But I would avoid drinking fruit juices, which is essentially just sugar water, as they've took out the fibre and pasteurised it, which removes the vitamin C. And the same goes for all of the processed foods. Ultra processed foods force your liver to convert the excess carbs that you eat into fat. That's right, it's not necessarily the cholesterol that's coming from the food that is clogging your arteries, but actually it's the carbs that are turning into a more dangerous type of cholesterol. This type is smaller, stickier and more likely to lodge inside the artery walls and form plaque. I should also mention that alcohol pushes your blood fats higher and it depletes nitric oxide as well. When the damage from these things keeps happening day after day for years, your body switches into a constant low grade inflammatory state. Silently, years of damage and inflammation causes that plaque in the arteries to harden. The cells inside the arteries actually begin to change and they start acting like bone forming cells. So the patches of cholesterol and the scar tissue starts to become calcified and turned into a hard, tough material like cement, causing the vessels to become stiff, triggering high blood pressure, poor circulation and all of the other problems. One of the surprising things that can actually cause this inflammation is bacteria from your gums. Studies have now found that the same bacteria that causes gum disease can actually slip through into your bloodstream and infect the lining of the arteries. This is one of the causes of inflammation that starts the whole process of forming plaque inside. 
and is why it's so important to keep up with your visits to the dentist and keep your mouth as clean as possible with age. Another major reason inflammation starts in the arteries is eating too many omega-6 oils. When a person consumes too many fried foods, vegetable oils or grains, it can put stress on the liver and causes fatty particles called VLDL to enter the bloodstream. This makes the blood thicker and stickier and more likely to cause placking or clogging of the arteries. The other major trigger for inflammation in the arteries that often gets ignored is number eight, chronic stress and poor sleep. It's been shown that even partial sleep loss raises cortisol levels by up to 45% the following day. Cortisol is the body's main stress hormone, and when it stays high for too long, it raises blood sugar, increases blood pressure, and gradually damages the delicate lining of the arteries over time. But it's the calcium going into those arteries that makes them stiff. Cholesterol deposits inside the arteries tend to remain quite soft when you're younger, but it's actually the calcium that goes in and hardens the plaque later that causes the major problems. Calcified plaque is much more dangerous because it makes those arteries more stiff and more likely to form clots. Calcium carbonate supplements, for example, can be very difficult for your body to process and may contribute to the hardening of the existing plaque inside. This is why I always say it's better to get your calcium from milk, cheese and natural vegetables rather than a supplement. However, there are certain nutrients that can help to prevent this calcium from building up in the arteries, like vitamin K2 and magnesium. Vitamin K2 activates specific proteins that direct calcium into your bones and teeth where it belongs. But if you're deficient in it, calcium is more likely to remain in the bloodstream and deposit in the arteries. The mineral magnesium also helps to stop calcium from crystallizing in the blood vessels as well. And it helps smooth muscles relax and stay flexible so that your blood can flow freely. Sadly, studies estimate that over 50% of people worldwide may not be getting enough magnesium in their diet. And the same can be said for number 11, potassium. Potassium helps muscles in the blood vessels relax after each heartbeat, but when potassium is low, arteries stay more constricted, which reduces nitric oxide signaling. Potassium tends to get depleted whenever we eat sugar, refined carbs or junk foods, but we can easily raise our levels by eating lots of vegetables and certain fish. Now number 12 is also a major problem, gut dysbiosis. Junk foods Alcohol, antibiotics and artificial sweeteners can all upset the balance of microbes that live inside your gut. When certain strains start overgrowing, they can produce a compound called TMAO. This has also been linked to accelerated plaque formation in the arteries. Now that we understand what damages the arteries, the real question becomes this. Can the body actually unclog arteries over time? Well, in recent years, researchers have identified natural systems in the body that actually help to repair and protect artery walls by activating certain transporters and proteins that can move excess cholesterol and calcium out of the arteries. So let's dive into how you can help your body naturally unclog your arteries. Step one is to boost nitric oxide. Your body needs three main nutrients to build nitric oxide, called arginine, citrulline and nitrates. The very best natural sources of these are celery, beets, the green outer flesh of the watermelon and specifically watermelon seeds, garlic, arugula, cabbage and radishes. Polyphenols from extra virgin olive oil and raw cacao are also good boosters. Try to rotate these foods throughout the week to help your arteries make more nitric oxide to keep the blood flowing freely and unrestricted. I should also mention sunlight. Infrared rays that naturally come from sunlight can raise nitric oxide levels along with essential vitamin D. Vitamin D acts like an anti-inflammatory hormone throughout the cardiovascular system, so try to get outside as much as you can or consider a vitamin D3 supplement in the winter. The other key nutrient you need for this is magnesium. 
Magnesium is essential for relaxing the muscles in the arteries to keep the blood flowing, but also to help break up rough, calcified arterial plaque. People who have magnesium deficiencies tend to have higher blood pressure and higher levels of stress, so try to eat magnesium-rich foods every single day. Good sources are avocados, pumpkin seeds, wild salmon, Valencia peanut butter, leafy greens, arugula, soaked almonds and raw cacao powder. If you want to take a supplement, always use a highly bioavailable form like magnesium glycinate or taurate. Avoid the cheaper magnesium oxide or multivitamin supplements which are very poorly absorbed. Now at this point you've supplied your body with the raw materials it needs to make nitric oxide. Next we should help to stabilise and clear out the existing plaque. Your body has a natural system called the reverse cholesterol transport. This helps to shuttle cholesterol out of the arteries and into the liver where it can be removed or recycled. Getting more oxygen by taking long walks in nature can help to activate this system, along with certain nutrients like niacin. Vitamin B3 or niacin activates a certain gene which helps your body to pull cholesterol out of artery cell walls whilst also helping prevent new plaque from forming inside. Many people use niacin supplements as they get older to assist them in lowering blood pressure. And niacin-rich foods include beef liver, turkey breast, nutritional yeast and portobello mushrooms. And vitamin K2 is also important. This is not the same as vitamin K. It is not used for clotting. K2 is different, it actually helps to remove calcium from the artery walls and direct it into the bones where it's supposed to be. The standard dose for a supplement is about 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 daily in a form called MK7. But you can also get this from eating natto, aged cheeses, ghee and liver. Now, we also need to help our bodies move the excess cholesterol and the fats out of the blood itself. And this happens with the assistance of bile salts. Your liver packages any cholesterol that you don't need into bile so that it can be eliminated through your stool. But if your bile flow is sluggish, the cholesterol can recirculate in the bloodstream. So to improve your bile flow, you can simply eat bitter foods like lemon, arugula or radish, or alternatively take tudka after meals, which is a strong purified bile salt. Taking bile salts also helps to restore balance to your gut bacteria. And finally, the last and most important step is controlling inflammation so that your arteries can stay flexible and resilient against the stresses of age. Reducing inflammation will help to keep the cardiovascular system working as it should. And one of the best ingredients for this is aged garlic extract. This is a form of fermented garlic which contains a powerful sulfur called s cysteine this has been shown in studies to have strong anti-inflammatory effects and to lower the amount of calcium building up in the arteries. People usually take up to 2400 milligrams of aged garlic extract on a daily basis for artery maintenance. Or you could simply eat fermented black garlic once or twice per week if you prefer. It's also a good idea to get lots of vitamin C. This nutrient is essential to help your body fight bacteria that can invade your arteries but also your gums. Good sources include bell peppers, cabbage, sauerkraut, kale, broccoli, berries, lemons and limes. Or acerola cherry is a good whole food supplement rather than just ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is one of the main antioxidants your body needs to control inflammation in the arteries. And you of course want to avoid those inflammatory foods that we mentioned earlier. The processed seed oils, carbs, sugars and fructose should be a very small part of your diet. Instead, focus on high quality omega-3 and protein rich foods. Omega-3 fats can counter the damage caused by omega-6 and have a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. They also help those proteins that we talked about earlier remove the cholesterol from the artery walls. My favourite source of omega-3s is arctic krill oil along with wild caught sardines, salmon, mackerel and fish roe. Just try to add these once or twice a week to really help your immune system control the inflammation.
Finally, do not underestimate sleep. Deep sleep is when inflammation is switched off, blood pressure drops, and artery repair actually happens. Even improving your sleep by one extra hour per night can lower your stress hormones and reduce ongoing damage to the artery lining. However, if you're struggling with this and you often wake up restless in the middle of the night, you may want to watch my next video on screen now to help you get all the sleep that you need. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I wish you great health, wealth, and happiness.